Well, hey guys, in today's video, I'm gonna be sharing with you my top five sunscreens from 2020. These are sunscreens that I pretty much started using in the beginning of 2020 or throughout 2020. Maybe they were just new to me. Some of them were newly released. Anyways, these are my favorites. First of all is a sunscreen by Veridio from Japan. It's their UV Moisture Gel. I adore this. It's water resistant, SPF 50, PA 4 plus. The PA rating, by the way, is just a way to evaluate how good the product is at protecting you against UVA. Those are the rays that come through window glass and destroy the deeper layers of the skin. Uh, this has wonderful filters in it for giving broad spectrum protection. It has octinoxate, it has tinosorb in it, Uvenol T150, Uvenol A+, and titanium dioxide. There is a slight white sheeny cast to this, but otherwise for me, it's, it's pretty much sheer. There's no cast, at least on my skin type. But because it has the titanium, you can kind of see a little bit of a, a sheer white sheen on a deeper skin tone. And it is water resistant, so I find that a lot of times water resistant sunscreens can kind of have a little bit of a shiny look to them and you do get that with this product um, but it's a nice lightweight gel formulation and it absorbs really quickly into the skin it's not greasy it's not sticky and I'll just show you here on the back of my hands it has almost like a it delivers almost like a burst of hydration many sunscreens have low molecular weight alcohols in them that terrify people. They're okay to have in there, they stabilize ingredients, but this product doesn't have those low molecular weight alcohols. And the reason I point that out is that a lot of people do find that those low molecular weight alcohols are drying. So this is a good one if you have dry skin, but in my opinion, it works well for most skin types across the board in terms of if you have oily skin, combination skin, dry skin, I think you would get along well with this. Just be aware that it does kind of have that little bit of a shiny residue to it. It's a nice base for cosmetics. And it also has some botanic extracts in it that add hydration and, you know, in theory help to fight off free radical damage. It has moringa seed oil, scutellaria, it has green tea, which, you know, green tea polyphenols in skincare products, not only do they potentially fight off free radicals, but they have been shown to diminish oiliness and diminish uh, the appearance of pores, which, you know, a lot of people enjoy. This also has Job's tears in, in the product offering hydration. I, I really have liked this. You know, Japanese sunscreens are some, some of the best. Y'all know I'm a fan of, of Japanese sunscreens, but this one was new to me. They also have an essence, uh, UV essence, that I also really enjoyed this year. Pretty similar, in my opinion, to this. I honestly didn't notice a difference. I'll list that one down below as well, but these were both, they were both fantastic. Second product is from the European market. It is a La Roche-Posay sunscreen that I started using a lot this year and really enjoying. Got another one here. It is their Anti-Shine uh, SPF 50 Plus. This is really ideal for people who have oily skin. It's not greasy whatsoever. I believe it does have a low molecular weight alcohol in it. So it, that's fine, but this formulation overall is more on the kind of matte side. So if you have dry skin, you may find this to be too drying. Uh, it has avobenzone, homosalate, octocrylin, uvenol T150, tinosorb, and it also has um, La Roche-Posay's proprietary Mexeril SX and XL. Those two are unique to L'Oreal. And those two filters you'll find in, you know, La Roche-Posay sunscreens or uh, Garnier sunscreens, uh, any company that's under the L'Oreal, in the L'Oreal family uh, outside of the U.S. Uh, and they, those filters are really unique. They offer amazing broad spectrum protection, especially the combination of the two, Mexeril, XF, X, Mexeril XL and Mexeril SX. Um, so yeah, I really adore this. I mean, very good broad spectrum protection. Like the Omi Verdeo products, this also has that scutellaria in it, which adds hydration and has a soothing anti-inflammatory effect. Um, and otherwise pretty no-nonsense ingredient list. By the way, all of these sunscreens are free of fragrance. So, I mean, I, uh, yeah, those of you who, who have been watching my videos for any number of years, you know that a top five video is likely to be all fragrance free, but if you're new here, welcome. I prefer fragrance free sunscreens. So yeah. 
I'm gonna take a moment here to enjoy a few sips and tell you guys about the weather. It's very gray and cloudy out today and it's actually kind of cold. It's mostly because anytime there's dampness in the December, January, February months here, it, it feels cold. Moving on to what you guys actually came here for and that is the next sunscreen. This is another one that you can get in the UK and it's by Altruist. If you've been following me for a while, you know I love their sunscreens. Uh, it's created by a British dermatologist and uh, they launched this this year. It's their sunscreen fluid and they really nailed the formulation. I love it. I highly encourage you guys to try it out. You can have it sent here to the US. Uh, you just have to pay shipping and duties, but this product at baseline is super affordable. So, I mean, even paying that upcharge, it's still not a bad deal. And a portion of the proceeds from the sale of their sunscreens goes to a wonderful charity under the same sun, which provides resources to people in Africa living with albinism. I'm just rubbing it in here to my hand so you can see what it looks like. But the, this product is water resistant. It's got apibenzone, Juvenal T150, Tinosorb S, Tinosorb A2B uh, and Sulazole and titanium dioxide. So you do get a little bit of a white flash. Can you guys see that? On my skin, it's not noticeable at all. But for those of you with deeper skin tone, with a deeper skin tone, you will see a cast with this, a little bit of a cast. But I really like it a lot, and it's not greasy, it's not heavy. It's a kind of akin to the La Roche-Posay Shaka Fluid, which I'm also a huge fan of. It's a little bit similar to that. This product doesn't have any, um, obviously there's no fragrance in this. This product also has proctone olamine, an anti-inflammatory ingredient that has antifungal properties and helps in reducing the burden of malassezia yeast. So if you have seborrheic dermatitis, rosacea, fungal acne, um, all of these conditions can be aggravated by that little yeast malassezia on the skin. And using products that have proctone olamine in them is a nice way to kind of help reduce the burden of that little yeast. In addition to that, this also has niacinamide, which is anti-inflammatory, helps calm down redness, and helps fight hyperpigmentation. Love this. Two bits, they really did a good job with it, and I think it's a, an improvement from their already wonderful baseline SPF 50 sunscreen for the face, the cream. But the nice thing about this, as opposed to the cream, is that it's not as shiny on the face. So I think people like the aesthetics of this, and it definitely represents an improvement in my opinion. Love it, love it, love it. All right, another one from La Roche-Posay. This one you can get in the US market. It is the Melton Sunscreen Milk. Really adored this two pieces, especially this summer with the humidity. This product is a chemical sunscreen and I really like La Roche-Posay chemical sunscreens because they, they do a good job stabilizing avabenzone. Now avabenzone is a filter that protects us against UVA and unlike sunscreens from Europe, Japan, etc. We don't have any other chemical filters here in the States that will offer that good broad spectrum UVA protection. Remember you've got UVA1 and UVA2. It's, 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 it's quite a range of wavelengths. And so we don't have the most, you know, we don't have all the filters at our disposal to formulate sunscreens. Uh, all we really have is avabenzone. It's wonderful, but it's not stable. And so manufacturers should do, you know, due diligence and stabilize avabenzone. And La Roche-Posay or, you know, L'Oreal does that. Uh, and in La Roche-Posay products, you have the Cellox technology that helps with stabilizing the avabenzone. But one thing I really like about this product uh, is that it doesn't have oxybenzone. Now oxybenzone is a chemical filter that for me, it tends to burn, sting, and make a sunscreen almost too unbearable to use around the eyes. And I don't like any sunscreen that burns and stings around the eyes because you really need to be putting sunscreen there. So skin cancers on the eyelids are really common, like basal cells. Many of you guys have had uh, some basal cells this year crop up on your eyelids. So thank you for sharing that. But yeah, all the more reason to be aware of protecting your eyelids. And of course, you know, wearing sunglasses also helps a lot, hats, etc. But uh, yammering aside, I like this, I can tolerate it around my eyes. Uh, now this product is great if you have oily skin or you live somewhere that's super humid because it's 
a very quick dry formulation. It doesn't leave a greasy residue on the skin. It is water resistant, another wonderful feature to have when you're somewhere humid and sweaty. Um, I love it. It's not drying whatsoever. It's actually pretty moisturizing and it's wonderful if you have acne prone skin and you're using topicals that are either drying or um, you know make your skin more sensitive i think you would tolerate this just fine it's also fantastic for the body i used a whole tube of this this summer loved it and this is the second one i actually got this as a side note of course from costco they had a great deal earlier this year where you could get this and then a smaller sunscreen for the face uh and it was a wonderful deal and then that that two pack ended up going on sale, so it was even an even better price. So if you're a Costco member, keep your eyes peeled around the summertime when they put out all of the sunscreens, keep your eyes peeled for the duo pack. Hopefully they, they put it out again this year because it's a really good deal. But yeah, I love this and it's one of the few chemical sunscreens with a high SPF uh, here in the States. It doesn't burn or sting around the eyes. You know, let me get another sip in here. Um, if you had asked me several years ago, does a higher SPF, is it better to get a, a higher SPF? I would have told you no. There's not much difference between SPF 30 and, and much higher. And you know, on paper that's correct. But in reality, we have learned that the way people apply sunscreens, they under apply sunscreens, so they never actually achieve the SPF on, uh, that's stated on the, on the label. And therefore, we've actually found out that higher SPFs end up being a better choice. Specifically, SPF 100 has been shown to be better at protecting people from a burn than I, I think they compared it to SPF 50, just because of the way people apply it. You know, in order to get to a, a stated SPF, you have to apply sunscreens at a density of two milligrams per centimeter square. Uh, just understand, it's a lot, and we're all, we're, nobody's really applying it at that density, myself included, and I really try and get a good layer on. It's just almost impossible. So most people are walking around with a much lower SPF on their actual skin than what is stated on the bottle, simply because of the way they apply it. And so if you start with a higher SPF, and you know, your baseline under application, you'll at least get to SPF 30. So I actually encourage higher SPF 50 or higher now you know on a day-to-day -day basis when you're mostly indoors it's cloudy out whatever and you're not spending a lot of time outside it's fine to use 30 but I wouldn't rely on 30 if you're gonna be outside participating in outdoor activities um, for you know greater than a few minutes I would go much higher personally and that's what I recommend people to do because you know you want that protection on board. And then of course you also want to rely on things like hats and sun protective clothing. But all that yammering aside, uh, the La Roche-Posay one is one that I recommend time and time again. Uh, speaking of SPF 30, last but not least, this is one I think I published the review on New Year's Eve of 2019 and continued to use throughout 2020. This is like my third tube of it. It's a CeraVe Hydrating uh, CeraVe Sheer Tint uh, SPF 30 sunscreen. This is a mineral sunscreen. The only mineral sunscreen I have here actually. This is the first drugstore tinted sunscreen that doesn't suck. I know, as a side note, I know the Australian Gold Botanic one is really popular and works really well for many people and that's great. On paper, I really don't have anything bad to say about that particular sunscreen other than the fact that every time I use it, I get a horrific irritant contact dermatitis and it's just too drying for my skin. So this is seriously the best tinted sunscreen from like the drugstore out there. I highly recommend trying it. The tint is nice. It works pretty well for at least medium skin tones. Uh, if you have a really pale skin tone, it, may, it might actually be too deep, but I really do find that it actually does end up giving a nice, as close to universal tint as possible. And really what they mean by that is that it should blend into whatever skin type you have. It's not intended to provide coverage like a foundation or anything like that. Instead, it's really just helpful in that it's not gonna leave that white streaky look and that tint should just kind of help mask 
the white flash basically so you know there's that uh it doesn't ultimately though it doesn't end up working for all skin types you know and you might have to find a tinted sunscreen that is a deeper tint but this is one of the you know this sunscreen is one that does actually end up working well uh, for medium to deep skin tones i have a video by the way on tinted sunscreens uh for different skin tones so i will link that down below for you guys um to check out but try this one if you have a deeper skin tone. I think it you know, might end up working out well for you. It's very moisturizing. It's not greasy. It gives a nice kind of glowy look to the skin. It doesn't pill. It doesn't ball. It's very, and at baseline, it's just a really nice moisturizer too. So it's, it's great in that sense that it, you know, for winter, if you've got dry skin, you can put this on and, and you know, you're done. You don't have to worry about adding extra moisturizer and, you know, layering it and all of these big unknowns. So yeah, I like it in that sense. It has niacinamide in it as do many of the CeraVe products. Now niacinamide can burn and sting for some people. So if that's you, you know, you wanna be wary of this product, but the niacinamide is helpful for calming down redness, irritation, and fighting off hyperpigmentation. Uh, so, you know, this product actually kind of addresses a lot more than just than just having a mineral sunscreen. It, it really addresses the moisturizing aspect that people are looking for. It gives a nice tint. And speaking of that tint, the tint is valuable because for people with deeper skin tones, uh, not only are, is your skin affected by UV, ultraviolet radiation from the sun, but it's also affected by visible light from the sun. And a lot of people don't realize that they're separate things. Ultraviolet radiation, you don't see it. You're not really aware of it other than if you burn, you know, other than if you get a sunburn, that's that's like a manifestation of UV, or if you get a tan, that's a manifestation of UV and you're aware that you had an exposure. As opposed to visible light, that's what you see and what illuminates the world, and that comes from the sun as well. So they're separate things. And visible light, you know, it's a spectrum, just like UV is a spectrum. And part, within, within the spe spectrum of visible light, you have blue light. Now blue light is such an intense, you get such an intense dose of it from the sun that, um, uh, it, it ends up being actually quite a lot. And that blue light in medium to deep skin tones can drive early onset and more persistent hyperpigmentation. So if you cope with any form of hyperpigmentation, you really need to be conscious of that. Now the only ingredients that actually protect against that are large particle zinc. So basically zinc oxide sunscreens that are you know thick, thick white cast. I mean like almost like paste. Um, or iron oxides. Iron oxides are going to be what gives the tint in a tinted sunscreen and they're also present in makeup. So your makeup can protect you from the visible light as well. Um, but it's nice to have them in a sunscreen too. So you, you know, have the UV protection on board, which you need, and you have the iron oxides. And then of course, you know, once the sunscreen dries and sets up, you can put your makeup on over it, more iron oxides, potentially more protection from those pro-pigmenting wavelengths of visible light. You guys, that's something that it's only come out in recent years. And so we need to keep the conversation going for people with medium to deep skin tones so that they are aware that not only do they need to protect against UV, but that visible portion is really what is a key driving force in their hyperpigmentation issues. And the way to protect against that, as it, as it stands now, from what we know, is large particle zinc oxide sunscreens, which leave that horrific cast, and the iron oxides in your makeup and your tinted sunscreens. And then, of course, physical means, hats, scarves, gloves, etc. cetera. Um, so, yeah. Wow, all that blobbing aside, these are the top five sunscreens that really stood out to me this year as, you know, first of all, they were kind of new to me and, you know, sunscreens that I started wearing more so in 2020. So it's not as though they launched this year or anything, um, but they, they stood out to me as kind of being the golden children of the year and ones that I will continue to use into 2021. Now, of course, there are other sunscreens that I love to bits and use throughout this year, but they weren't new to me. Like the dermatology one that I use, I've been using that for a while uh, and various others. So comment below, you guys, what sunscreens are you loving this year? Did you use it? Have you used any of these? Did they work out for you or did you load them? And if so, why? Please share in the comments. Anything, any little tidbit, any little tidpoint. <laughs> 
<laughs> any little tidbit you can share about your experience with a sunscreen to maybe help somebody else find one. It's all about the journey to find sunscreens that you like and will wear because the most effective sunscreen, it doesn't matter the ingredients, it's the one that you actually will wear and use and reapply consistently. So hopefully, you know, these were the top five that I loved this year, but share down below what you guys like and have been using this year. I hope you guys are having a great uh, holiday week and you know enjoying the ends of 2020. <laughs> <laughs> Looking forward to 2021. <laughs> Stay tuned. Uh, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.